How do we make a simple 12 bar blues sound really interesting? Using different chords, different ways to play the chords. Solos, walks, and maybe turnarounds. If you've been playing the 12 bar blues for a while, maybe you're getting a little bored of the same old riffs throughout the whole thing. There is a technique that we can learn that will allow you to quickly replace any particular thing at any moment. So, for example, to change instead of doing a riff, you play a chord, or instead of playing a chord, you play a little piece of solo. Now, it sounds very difficult to do, but the secret is just choose certain measures to do certain things. And as you go through and practice it, you can make it more complicated as you go. So for example, let's take just bars um, three and four and do something more interesting than just playing the riff. So I've got two bars of my E riff. Maybe I can fancy that up a bit. I'm gonna slam beat one of bar three and I'm just gonna play something simple in E minor pentatonic. I could play anything here in open. But I have to be sure that I get to the A chord, which is bar five. We wanna make sure that we always hear the harmonic change, the chord change, especially when we don't have a band backing us up. For that little soloing section, I often slide up into what I call the extension shape. This is this little piece up here, which is easy to play. It's the five notes of the pentatonic scale, and it works so great to slide up into it. If you want, it also has a blue note at the top. And if you really have the brain power left, you can aim for this E as your ending note. So if I go from the top, E riff, I'm going to slam E. Now you'll notice that I hit that A. That was beat one of bar five because that is the A chord. We want to hear that. So E, here we go, slam E. to hear that A. You have to make sure that when you're soloing that you're still kind of listening to the sound of the 12 bar in your head behind you because you need to make sure that you're only soloing for those two bars. And because it's only two bars, in a way it's actually kind of freeing. It means that we don't have to play anything too complicated. We don't have to play the coolest licks. Just the fact that you're combining the 12 bar form with the occasional little bit of solo is already cool enough. Hey, there it is, right? Now, if your licks aren't so fancy as that, don't worry about it, play anything. It can be so simple. That was four notes played in a different combination. I don't know. Let's take that super simple thing and we'll put it in bars three and four. The point is, especially right now, if you're just learning to combine the 12 bar with licks and other things, is keep it simple because the main thing you're learning right now is hearing the 12 bar in your mind so that you're not going over. You're not soloing or doing some other trick over the next chord change. We wanna hear those chord changes. But I should say that you can download the tabs of this exercise from my website, which is bluemorris.com and the link is below. Let's make the first uh, four bars a little more complicated by doing what we call a quick change. 
A quick change simply means that you're going to go to the A chord in measure 2. So it comes pretty quick. That's why it's called a quick change. Um, so in this case, we get one measure of E, one measure of A, and then we would have two measures of E, but we're going to solo for those two measures of E, right? So here's E, here's the quick change, A. Now I've got to slam E. That's the next part, right? So the quick change helps the 12 bar to sound more interesting because otherwise we do get four measures of E at the beginning of the 12 bar, and it's a long ways. Um, some of the older blues songs, they have those four bars, and all that Chuck Berry stuff has four bars of E, but a lot of songs have the quick change to make that part a little more interesting. So we now have one measure of E, we have quick change to A, we've got two measures of a tiny little solo, and then we're in bar five, and we know bar five is A. So we're just gonna do an A riff for now. You already know how to do that, because we did it on the E, right? And then we know we have two bars of E. So we're gonna use those bars, bars seven and eight, which are E, to do a little solo again. We have E, quick change to A, We have two measures of A, just do this for now, slam E, and that's my little uh, solo in there for bars 7 and 8. It's getting pretty complicated already, but if you can handle it, let's just keep adding more interesting things. Instead of doing this for A, the classic uh, blues boogie riff, we're gonna play an A7 chord instead. It's not hard, it's actually pretty easy to do. And the advantage of that is that um, just the fact that we're going to a chord and we're no longer doing the boogie riff that we were doing is very interesting, right? Sounds so simple, but in fact, doing boogie riff and then chord is a very different sound, right? The chord is gonna jangle, the chord's gonna ring out, has a different groove. It's gonna be good. Let's hear it from the top. Here's E, E riff, then we do A riff, quick change, slam E. Now A7, slam E, solo. Right, so now we've got riffs, we've got solos, and we've got chords, and we haven't even gone through the whole 12 bar yet. We're still only eight measures in. So let's do the last four measures. The last four measures are gonna go B7, A7, and then a turnaround. So let's just do B7 chord, and let's just do an A7 chord, because we already did that. And I think those always sound good because in that spot, we really only have one measure for B7 and one measure for A7 anyway, so we don't need anything fancy there. Let's do up to there. Slam E. A7. I got two measures, right? Slam E again. A7. Now we have a turnaround. A turnaround helps the 12 bar to sound like it's going to spin back around and restart, right? It's going to set up the 5 chord, and the 5 chord always announces the 1 chord. 1 chord's at the beginning of the song. So we're just going to use a classic turnaround. We could do tons of them. Um, we can do, let's do this one. Let's see, we're going to go. I really like this one, especially for acoustic blues. So we're gonna take this D note here. This D note is a fifth fret of the A string. And then what I'm gonna do, I pluck that with my pick, and then I hit the high E string with a finger there. That's a little bit trickier, but you can do it. That second fret we notice is the B note. And because, want the five chord. So we have 
Oh, and remember that we always have to slam the one chord before we do the turnaround riff. So we slam E. We could just do that little E, or we could slam a big chord, whatever. I'm probably just going to do the little E. It's easier. And then get to hit B7, my five chord. Okay, here we go. Whole thing. E, quick change to A. E, solo. A7 Slam E B7 A7 Slam E and do the turnaround And B7 Now let's make the B7 a little more interesting just by walking to the B7 This is a very common move The walk goes like this. On the A string, we go A, A sharp, B. Bum, bum, bum. When I'm coming off of bar eight, doing my little solo, I'm gonna go. Now I have to time that because the first two notes are before the B7, right? It's a walk to B7. So these come in bar eight. Uh, in bar eight, yeah. So if I do my little solo before that, and let's walk to B7 again at the end of the turnaround. Yeah, more cool, right? Okay. So, my goodness, how do we keep this all in our mind? I mean, ultimately, each of these tricks can be added and removed at any moment. You can always just go back to your standard riff. Ain't nothing wrong with it. The riff sounds great. And for now, just keep it to a level that is doable for you. If it's just adding one of those tricks, if it's just adding a little solo in bars three and four, just do that for now, right? But what we have is we have a pretty complex and cool sounding thing. Remember, the soloing parts, they don't need to be fancy. I'm barely doing much, honestly. It's just minor pentatonic because it sounds cool already, the fact that it's just been placed in there in the middle of the song. Let's do it. E. A. B7 walk there. Uh, doesn't matter, I got there. The most important thing is that when you change a section of the 12 bar, you've got to keep it the same length. And it's harder than you might think if you haven't done it before. So one of the things you can do is try to do it along to a jam track. Uh, a slow jam track so that you can hear when the jam track goes to the A chord and make sure you are also going to the A chord. And keep the licks that you play when you do the little soloing bit, just keep them really simple. It really doesn't have to be fancy at all. It already sounds good just by fact of us placing it in the 12 bar with everything else going on. I'm gonna put a video on the screen here for you from my channel, please check that out. I've got lots more videos on soloing and blues guitar and acoustic guitar and electric guitar. My name is Blue Morris and I teach guitar lessons here in Vancouver, Canada. I'm gonna make a video every Saturday for about a year here. I hope to see you then.